Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bob Wen, and I'm a PhD in economics. It's my pleasure to present my work at this conference. I look forward to your advice and suggestions. The research I present today is about the trichord family structure and intergenerational earnings improvement. The causal effect of growing up in a two-parent household on adequate labor income. Evidence from various surveys and countries. The trichord family structure has changed over time in the United States, according to the panel study of income dynamics, the PSID surveys, the flexion of two-parent families among all the families with at least one child under 18 years old has dropped from 75 percent in 1968. To sixty-four percent in two thousand and seventeen. I wonder if growing up in a two-parent household affects children's earnings and other labor market outcomes in their adulthood. In this research, I will examine whether there is a causal relationship between growing up in a two-parent household and workers' hourly wages. I will look into the mechanism that links the trichord family structure to adulthood earnings. I will also compare estimates of the two-parent trichord family effects between different survey data across countries. I connect trichord family structure with adult children hourly wages using the individual level data from PSID. 1968 to 2017. I take advantage of the family descendant structure of the sample and fit the family fixed effects model. I find positive and significant causal effects of growing up in two-parent household on labor income. I also find positive two-parent household effects using the state level data from the current population surveys. CPS. The findings are consistent with those from the household income and labor dynamics in Australia surveys. To identify the causal relationship, I adopt three strategies. First, I try to obtain the Satterer's perverse effect, meaning that I hold all other relevant factors fixed. I include parents' education in the model to disentangle the trichord family structure effect from the other parental influence. The workers' demographic characteristics, such as their age, gender, race, and region, influence their labor income and are correlated with whether they grew up in a two-parent household. So I include them in the model as control variables. Second, there could be unobserved factors that affect both the trichord family structure and adulthood earnings, which will lead to omitted variable bias. For example, being patient is closely related to an intact family structure. Children inherit their parents' patience, and a child's patience has a positive impact on her job performance and earnings. If patience Is omitted from the model, it will lead to an upward bias, because patience is positively related to both the outcome variable and the endogenous expenditure variable. I assume that the unobserved family-specific factors are identical for all the family members within each family. So I can employ the family fixed effect methods. To control for these unobserved factors, and the estimates are consistent or unbiased. The family descendant structure of the sample allows me to use the family fixed effects regression. Here's the family tree for one typical family. The individuals inside the rectangles were surveyed in 2017 and in our sample. 
All of them can be traced back to one original family at the first wave of the PSID survey. I assume that all the descendants of the same family have identical characteristics that can be captured by the family fixed effects. In the sample, there were 1,400 families like this one, but with different number of descendants. In the labor income regressions, the workers in the model were employed at the time of the survey and had positive earnings. If we are interested in employed workers, there's no problem. But if we care about all the individuals at their prime working ages from 25 to 54, the selected sample could lead to bias. That is because the employed workers may not represent the entire population. I follow the Hackman two-step procedures to alleviate the possible endogenous self-selection into the labor force. In the context of the family fixed effects models, the log of the hourly wage of the J descendant from the I family is a function of the triquid family structure and a set of control variables. I define the binary expenditure variable growing up in a two-parent household as the children living with both parents for all 16 years of the childhood. If their parents had ever divorced, separated, or become a single parent at any time during their childhood, the children will not be considered as growing up in a two-parent household. In the pooled OLS regression with control variables of age, age squared, gender, race, region, and parent education, the estimated coefficient on the two-parent dummy is 0.132. It suggests that growing up in a two-parent household increases adulthood earnings by 13.2% on average, holding the workers' demographic characteristics and their parents' background fixed. We then take into account the family fixed effects and the estimated effect drops to 8.6%. It implies that the poor OLS estimate is over-biased. The unobserved family-specific factors as a whole affect the adulthood earnings in the same direction as it influenced whether the worker grew up in a two-parent household. It is consistent with the example of patients I just mentioned. In the family fixed effects multiple regression, the two-parent triquid family effect on adulthood earnings has already puzzled out the other relevant factors and the family fixed effects. So it is the ceteris paribus relationship between triquid family structure and adulthood earnings. Next, if we want to estimate the effects for the entire population, including those unemployed, we can use the sample selection bias correction and the result becomes higher. I draw a graph to show how the hourly wages change with ages for the two groups of workers defined by their triquid family structures. It is based on the family fixed effects multiple regression model. The workers who grew up in a two-parent household earn more than their counterparts who did not live with both parents in their childhood for all ages. On average, other things equal. Growing up in intact family benefits not only adequate earnings but also other labor market outcomes. When I replace the outcome variable of hourly wage with employment status, I find positive in significant two-parent household effects on the probability of employment. For instance, the last column of the table shows that in the multiple 
linear probability model with family fixed effects. The individuals who are raised by intact families are four percentage points more likely to be employed at the time of the survey, after holding relevant factors constant and controlling for the family fixed effects. I show the effect in the graph. It illustrates the probability of employment for two groups of individuals, one for those who grew up in intact families and the other for those who were raised by non-intact families. For both groups of people, the probability of employment decreases with the number of children. But the people from two-parent triquid families always have a higher probability of working. Educational attainment differs between workers. The workers who grew up in a two-parent household received half a year more schooling than others. After we hold relevant factors constant and take into account the family fixed effects. I draw the graph based on the family fixed effects multiple regression. It shows the predicted years of schooling for two groups of workers with different triquid family structures. Female workers received more education than male workers, and those from intact triquid families have more years of schooling than others on average. The workers from intact triquid families are also more healthy, according to their self-reported health status in the survey. The multiple linear probability model with family fixed effects suggests that growing up in two-parent household increases the probability by 3.6 percentage points of being good, very good or excellent in health. The predicted health status based on the regression estimates shows the difference in health between the two groups of workers. The workers from intact triquid families are more likely to maintain their marriage than those from non intact triquid families. The former is nearly six percentage points higher in the probability of marriage according to the multiple linear probability model with family fixed effects. The graph based on the estimates shows that an intact triquid family positively affects the probability of maintaining a marriage. Now we have the two parent household facts on five labor market outcomes, labor income, employment, education, house and marriage. They are closely related to each other. First, the employment regression helps correct the sample selection bias in the labor income equation. I have already talked about it. Second, education, health and marriage help explain the two-parent household effect on adequate earnings. The path diagram illustrates that education, health and marriage are the three mediator variables that transfer the triquid family structure effect on adequate labour income. It is about the mechanism of the total effect. It can be decomposed into direct and indirect effects. I use the family fixed effects regressions as an example. The total effect model gives an estimate of 0.087. Growing up in a two-parent household increases the worker's adequate earnings by 8.7% on average. The direct effect is the effect that is not transferred by the three mediator variables. It is 3.6% and it is not statistically significant at the 10% level. We can see that the three mediator variables contribute to wages. For the first channel of the indirect effect, 
growing up in a two-parent household raises education by 0.4 years of schooling. Through the second channel of health, workers from intact families are 5.3 percentage points more likely to be healthy. In the third channel of marriage, the workers who grew up in a two-parent household are 5.8 percentage points more likely to maintain their marriage. We obtain all these estimates after parceling out the relevant influences of age, gender, race, region, and parents' education. This is a simultaneous equations model. The estimates are slightly different from those from the individual regressions because of the change in the sample size. We can verify that the total effect equals the sum of the direct and indirect effects. A majority of the two-parent household effects on adequate earnings goes through the three channels. The three mediator variables account for 59% of the total effect. Education alone helps transfer 47% of the total effect. The above findings are based on the PSID survey data. I use another data source, the current population survey, CPS, and find consistent results. The CPS is a repeated cross-sectional data. The workers surveyed each year were randomly chosen, and we do not know whether they are the same workers. So we could not use the worker as a basic unit and employ the panel data approaches. However, we could use the state as a basic unit. The surveyed workers are representative of all the workers in that state. We could calculate the state level averages for wage, age, gender, marital status, and educational attainment, and then treat the state as a basic unit and form the state year panel data set. The two parent household rates are measured in fractions. The fixed effects multiple regression suggests that. If the two-parent household rate increases by 0.1 or 10 percentage points, the worker's hourly wage will increase by 7.7% on average after holding relevant factors constant and accounting for the state and year fixed effects. I find similar two-parent household effects in Australia. I use the household income and labour dynamics in Australia survey data and find that the workers from intact tricot families are 5% more than other workers. The effect doubles if we consider the sample selection bias. In conclusion, I find positive and significant two-parent tricot family effects on adequate earnings after holding relevant factors constant and accounting for the family fixed effects using the PSID survey data. Tricot family structure affects the workers' earnings through three channels. The findings are consistent across studies using the individual level data and the state level data. I find similar two-parent household effects between the United States and Australia. That's it. Let me know if you have any questions. And thank you very much. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.